It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFaw. Before we get started, we want to help you save some money. That's right, folks. Uh, don't forget to use our promo codes to save that money. And let's start off with BuckBaits.com. That's right, the brick-and-mortar store of BuckBaits down at Sterling Heights, Michigan at 15 and Dodge Park. Go over there. If you're on the website, BuckBaits.com, use the promo code UNJ20. That will give you 20% off your order. For those of you who are looking for Easy Cut products, make sure you go to EasyCutProducts.com. And when you're there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ15OFF to save 15% off your order. And let's not forget Lincoln Roan over at PackerMax.com. It's never too early, never too late to think about the PackerMax. Go on over to PackerMax.com, use the promo code UNJ25. That'll get you $25 off your order over at PackerMax Outdoor. For those of you looking for some new firearms and firearm products, make sure you go over to the islandarmory.com. While you're there shopping, use the promo code UNJ25. J10 to save 10% off your order there. If you shot that bird of a lifetime and you want it mounted, don't forget Troublesome Creek Taxidermy. We've had them live on the show. We've talked to them. Uh, you want to get 10% off your order, go to Facebook, go to troublesome.creek.7, find their website. If you go to our website, UNJ, make sure to click on the button to download the form. You get 10% off over there using the code UNJ10. Looking for that game call, whether it be a squirrel, whether it be goose, duck, deer, make sure you go to JPO Game Calls. Look for them at jpogamecalls.com. And while you're there shopping, you use the UNJ10 promo code to save 10% off your order. And Miller Deer Tracking, the man that seems to never sleep during deer season, get 20% off your next deer tracking uh, using the promo code UNJ20. Look for Miller Deer Tracking on Facebook or give him a call over at 810-240-4891. Looking for the hottest new plastics to take on the water, whether it be hard water or soft water, make sure you go over to southernindianabaitco.com. While there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order. Deer Camp Coffee, folks. We drink it every night on the show. You want to try it? You can go to their brick and mortar store at 15 and Dodge Park at Deer Camp itself or go to DeerCampCoffee.com. Also use our promo code UNJ10. You get 10% off your order. And don't forget, get a bag of the UNJ Medium Roast Blend there as well. All right, Danny. Where's our live view camera look from tonight? Good evening, everybody. Live in the cabin. That's right, Up North Journal. We're taking a little trip down to Crawford's in Crawfordsville, Indiana, looking at Sugar Creek. That's right, folks. 43 degrees. The water is flowing. The cars are driving over the creek. How do you like that? Sugar Creek down in Indiana in Crawfordsville. Absolutely. Do we know somebody down there? We do know somebody down there. And, you know, it, it's always good to go where, uh, you know, where we, we have people on the show and we can kind of show in their backyard. And we're actually told that that's a good fishing spot. And who would that be? Well, you got to go see Mr. Mark Coleman. Mark, what's going on? Mr. Hey, good evening, everybody. Yeah, um, you mentioned a, a camera that I didn't even know existed. And Danny kind of creeped me out a little bit when he said you can see in my backyard. You probably don't want to see in my backyard in any mode. But no, uh, the way you described that camera, Sugar Creek um, kind of snakes through the whole town here in Crawfordsville, and there is fish everywhere in there. So if anyone's ever interested in taking a quick fishing trip on Sugar Creek, um, give so me a shout. I'd be happy to take you down there. Nice. Did you hear that, uh, Robbie? He said he's going to take you fishing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of half afraid to let him take me fishing. I don't know if I'll come back or not. <laughs> Especially after what we were talking about before the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be fine, Robbie. You're tall. Uh, that, that hat's kind of freaking me out a little bit. I don't know if he's going to bring it to the show this weekend or not, but I don't know. That's good stuff. Robbie Perot from Antler King, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, I apologize for Mark and... I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about them. But, uh, yeah, th thank you both for coming on tonight. We're going to talk some food plots. So That's you. right. We're, we're, we're talking springtime. It's getting kind of warm. It's 43 down by you guys. It's probably in the 40s up here. But the snow is rapidly leaving. It is. And now we got to start thinking about spring food plots. 
Uh, word on the street is you guys are wrapping up the public shows this week. Uh, and uh, we're going to turn our attention to spring planning, right, Robbie? Absolutely. Got a <clears throat> last show here in Illinois this weekend and open season show. And after that, we're planting away. So I'm, I'm looking. I, I enjoy the show season. I enjoy the show circuit. But, man, it, it's been a rough one. Uh, about eight weeks straight in a row. I'm, I'm ready to get turn some dirt a little bit. That's right, and a shout-out from Randy Stoppenhagen. Robbie Prude is the real deal and the nicest guy. Find him in Peoria this week. That's where you'll be, right? Absolutely. Oh, Randy, he's a good guy right there. He is a good guy. We, we love talking with him and, and uh, hearing about those elk hunts. And actually, he's, he's a Michigander from, uh, from a few years back before Absolutely. he moved out to Idaho. So he's a Midwesterner. He knows what's going on over here. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Big shout out to Robbie. Uh, you're wearing a raised outdoors t-shirt, I do believe. Yes, sir. A yep. Shout out to them. They're announcing their, uh, I got a email, we got tagged in a post today from them about the Michigan camp. And we'll post that uh, here in a day or two. Are they starting to do their registration? Yep, I do believe so. It's got all the info on it. We'll share that here when we get a second. But, uh, well, Robbie, it's getting to be about that time where, you know, getting that bug. I, I see a lot of reports. This is a shout out to, to Mark Coleman of uh, morels popping up further down south. Um, us up here in the north, we're still about a month away. Yeah, we've got, well, we've got grass just starting to green up. We get rain. To, actually, we got snow today. It's gone now. It melted pretty quick. But uh, we still got cold weather. We got freezing nights up. In Danny's neck of the woods up in the UP, imagine you still got a little bit of snow on the ground up there too. So, you know, for guys here in the Midwest, our, our temperatures are kind of all over the place depending on where we're at. What what do we need to be thinking now uh, going into this growing season coming up? What, what would you suggest that some guys can do to be successful here coming up? Well, all right, the number one thing they can be doing is, you know, doing a soil sample, checking their pH, you know, get – Get that pH up in that soil right now is prime time. Uh, if they haven't already done it, they need to be getting that, that lime put on, getting the pH build up in their soil. Then they can start looking at either, you know, their frost seeding, getting a little farther south, you're getting more into the overseeding now because the frost is getting out of the ground. Uh, but the pH of that soil is, is key right now. And, and and you know you talk about soil testing pH levels. There's there's several methods you could do it. You can send it off to your extension office in, in your local area. Uh, you can uh, I know there's a couple other places you can send to. But Antler King themselves has an instant pH kit. Uh, and you know talk about that. And it, it's just not one kit, correct? No, uh, our little fifteen dollar kit will actually do four different food plots. So you have a kit that you can actually get a little bit of distilled water, uh, get eight ounces of soil out of your food plot. I like taking a sample from all four corners, one in the center, mixing it up, taking an eight ounce sample out of it. Uh, mix that eight ounces of uh, dirt with eight ounces of distilled water, stir it up to a slurry, let it set 10 minutes, and before you walk out of that plot, you'll know by our chart after you dip your strip in there exactly how much lime you need per acre to raise it up to the desired amount that you want. Um, Mark, have you used this? Nope. Have you used this kit? Every year. And how is it? You tell us how easy it is to use. Yeah, and Robbie explained it probably the best way. I'm, I'm starting a new food plot right now, and I'm just clearing the ground. Um, I actually have um, a DR trimmer that I'm getting ready to put what they call a beaver blade on it. That's got a chainsaw, circular saw on it. On it, so it's you push it in there and cut these trees out. But I'm clearing the area for this new food plot. And as soon as I get all the brush off of the first thing I'm going to do is, is run this pH soil test. And it's just that simple. Just, you have to have the distilled water because you don't want to bring in any foreign things that's going to cause the, the test to be off. Distilled water, eight ounces of dirt. This food plot's only going to be about probably a 40 by 80 foot. I mean, it's not a real big one. And once I get that sample test, then I'm going to know what my pH is at. And based on that, I'm going to determine, okay, what, what's going to go into the ground here? Um, every bag of Antler King is going to tell you what that will grow best in. 
Um, but it's also going to tell you inside this package of uh, this pH strip test kit, it's going to tell you about how much lime you should add. Um, if you do get a low test like a 5 or a 5.0, you can go to the chart. It's real easy to read, and it's going to tell you how much lime you need to add to this to get the pH level up to where it needs to be. So it's, you know, it's a very, very simple. The best thing about it, you can do it yourself right in the field. You know, and that's what I was just getting ready to say. Uh, most, peop- most of these things you got to send in. you got to wait for the results to come back. This is something you can do right on the spot and have the results right there so then you can run down uh, to your, your supply place and get whatever you need to put back into that soil and get the job done in the same same day, actually. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and um, one thing I want to make sure, Robbie, um, when going to get the soil samples, do I need to use, uh, should I use specific utensils to get the dirt? Uh, metal pail, metal shovel, plastic. What, what, what should I use to gather the soil and put it in for the best result? Really, I mean, I like using this a little garden shovel. It doesn't matter if it's metal, if it's plastic, what it is. I just like a little handheld garden shovel. Uh, I'll take like a, one of our Lick Magic buckets or just a little gallon and a half, two gallon bucket so I can get all, four, all five of my samples dump it in there. I also have what they call a soil plugger. It's a round tube that you just take a plug out of the soil. So it, it doesn't really matter what you use, but I like getting down about three to six inches into that soil, not the top layer. I like knocking that that three to three to six inches off and getting a little bit deeper in there. Gotcha. Right, exactly. And and as we uh, we have here, uh, with Antler King, they provide uh, the listing of what is preferred pH uh uh, for brown, clay, and black soils, for sandy soils, for all of them. And then it, it goes to list uh, the products for Antler King, Clover Mix, Honey Hole, Red Zone, uh, Lights Out, what they prefer uh, for the pH level. Um, on average, Robbie, what do you think, could I take that soil sample today and apply my lime ASAP would I be good for spring planting probably here in about a month or two what you're looking at is depend on the lime that you use ag lime takes six months to break down so that's why you always see your farmers putting it on the fall ahead of time or the winter ahead of time after their crops are out so it takes six months to break down but it lasts a lot longer than pelletized lime but pelletized lime will break down in about three months, and it only takes a tenth of the amount. So I'm always going to want pelletized lime for my food plots. Uh, the one thing about it is, even if you get it put down just prior to planting, you're building that soil at the same time that's growing. So you're, you're going to eventually see a difference in it. You might not see it right away with them plants growing, but you're going to see a difference in the months to come. Gotcha. So, so putting it, once you notice your soil is below pH, uh, as soon as you can get the lime on, uh, it, it's it's a positive. Uh, it might you might not see it right away, but as the months go on, you will see that improvement. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the pH, the pH is the most important step to any food plot. The pH is is actually the the tool that is going to allow that plant to absorb in the, the nutrients and that you put into it. So, you know, if you look at a plot that's a 5.5 pH and it's acidic enough that you can, the fertilizer you put on it, you're actually wasting about 33% of that fertilizer by not getting that pH up to 7.0 at that neutral stage. So the only way, no matter if the plant will grow in a 5.5 pH, the only way that plant can get 100% of the nutrients you offer it is to have that pH up to a 7.0. So, I don't like throwing it away. And so. actually, we're showing that uh, graphic right now where at neutral is 7.0. It's 100% across the board, no fertilizer wasted. But you picked out 5.5 where you're losing 32%. And if you go down to 4.5, you're losing 71%. So, it's yeah. it's critical if you're going to spend money why not try to get it to where you're maximize your cost there you go maximize what you're putting into it the the cost you're putting into it right and 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 for you mark colvin how's it looking for your plots uh the ones that you have established have you have you worked on the ph level there 
Yeah, I have worked on them a little bit. Um, a lot of my plots are off the field, and most of them are down in a, a creek bottom or in a backwoods area. Um, the pH runs anywhere between a 5.5 and a 6.5. Um, and you can tell the difference when you put on the fertilizer versus not, just because of the size of the plant, um, the growth. Uh, I have game changer clover that I use down the creek bottom because it grows in a shaded area a lot better than the trophy clover. And the deer will eat it down, but year after year it keeps coming back bigger and stronger. It's just, you know, figuring out the strategy here is what you want to have and figuring out that you need that right pH to get the most out of your food plot for a healthy herd. And the little investment on the front end with this uh, pelletized line really will go a long ways in saving you money, but also making a better looking food plot and a bigger, healthier herd. So it's money well spent. Um, and, and I'm just going to bring this up real quick, Robbie. I know that a lot of people also ask about, is there any liquid fertilizer? Or is there any soil conditioner that I could put on to get an immediate result? Is there anything like that? Yeah, we have, we have a product, our uh, Plot Max, which is a soil conditioner that helps break down that soil to allow the nutrients to be absorbed in by them plants a lot easier, uh, especially to store nutrients that are already in the soil. It will spike your pH up a little bit, but it is not a pH enhancer. Um, I'll leave it this way. When it comes to liquid uh, calcium, I highly recommend you use pelletized lime or ag lime. And uh, so our, our plot max is actually humic acid. That will spike it. It's very short-lived. It is not a pH enhancer. It is actually a soil conditioner. So there you go. So the best way to do it, get your test. Use the pelletized lime. You can use the enhancers with the Atlant King Plot Max, and then you can start your way onto a great food plot. And I tell you what, we're going to come up on our first break. When we come back, we're going to continue our planning talk, and we're going to make an announcement going out of our second break, out of our first break. All right, we're going to take a quick step outside, take our first break. We'll be right back after this. Oh, 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 Cody Jarrett is chiming in. He says he's actually used the kit. Uh, that's the, the soil testing kit uh, this past weekend, and he's getting ready for red zone. Yes, he is. Yep. And Randy, Randy, Stop, and Randy Stoppenhagen said, the hat threw me off. It's Mark Coleman. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we get a shout-out to us. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and Cody also said it's starting to green up in the southeast. You know, I was on vacation uh, a couple weeks back, and we were down uh, all the way from, from Michigan down to the Gulf Coast in Alabama. And I noticed going through Kentucky, yeah, okay, you start to see a little bit when you get south of Louisville. And then all of a sudden you get down closer to Bowling Green, all of a sudden, bam. Oh, really? It's just like somebody turned a light switch on, and it's green grass Leaves are popping on the trees, and from there, the rest of the way down, man. It, it's just, it springs there. Wow. Buttercups are blooming. So, yeah, definitely down there in the southeast, it's definitely starting to pop. So Wow, that's awesome. Looking forward to uh, that happening here real soon. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so All right. Uh, you all set? Yep, let's do this. All right, here we go. Stand by. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Second segment of the show, we're talking with... Robbie Pruitt from Antler King, Mark Coleman, Team UNJ down in Indiana. He's uh, he's down there in Crawfordsville. Uh, that's UNJ South, we're UNJ North, so to speak. <laughs> right. So exactly. So, but uh, we we purposely let this go to the second segment. Uh, big announcement here at Up North Journal. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Uh, we've had several announcements the last couple of weeks, so we're just going to add to it. And uh, our partnership with Antler King. Uh, starting this year, working together, uh, bringing them on as a proud sponsor of Up North Journal. So, welcome aboard, Robbie. Glad to have you, man. I appreciate it. It's uh, we're looking forward to getting some some stuff in the ground here and uh, putting it to work for you. So, uh, I know uh, we we've heard nothing but good stories from Mark uh, of him using this, all of your products here in the past. So uh, we're, we're anxious to get them up here in Michigan and put them in the soil. And I'm not going to lie when it's kind of been uh, a lifelong, uh, not a lifelong, 
uh, outdoor lifelong, I guess, for me to bring on Antler King as a, a sponsor. Uh, from the basic orange bag I remember back in the day uh, for their minerals, uh, which was kind of cool, and I always, I always loved that. And uh, now they're aboard, so we hope to do you proud. Uh, we got a, a good guy helping you out this weekend. Uh, Mark Coleman will be, uh, you'll be in Peoria, correct? Yeah, we're going to be in Peoria for a couple days, three days actually, this weekend, doing the show over there. Um, hopefully, it's always a good show. This year, I think it's almost doubled in size, so that's going to be a good thing. Uh, we run into a lot of people that, uh, you know, are repeat um, customers of ours and have some great conversations with them. All right, awesome. Um, okay, we got a question out of the gate going back to our last segment about pH levels. Uh, we talked about getting a soil sample test now. Um, if I took a test last fall, am I going to see a considerable amount of difference through the winter where it's changed a lot? Or how does that work uh, in, let's say, the six-month span that uh, snow covered the ground and now I've been able to get back and, and get into the dirt? It's actually going to depend on what you actually have planted in it. If it's an existing plot that was there that you test the soil in, uh, if it's just virgin ground, you're going to be pretty close. You'll be very close. But if it was something that, let's say you had like a brassica variety, like our honey hole or slam dunk or grade eight, stuff like that, uh, a lot of people don't realize brassicas are actually a rotation crop. So you really, after about the actually no more than the third year, you always want to rotate them crops out of that, that area because the brassicas will destroy that soil. So if you're planting any kind of brassicas in there and you took a soil sample that fall and you didn't do nothing with it, uh, it will complete, It will be a lot lower this spring than it was last fall. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Anthony, you got you to keep conditioning it and giving it, giving it what it needs. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good to know. Good to know because, you know, some people – you know, once they leave in the fall, they button up the camp or whatever they might do, and then they're done. Like, mm -hmm. you know, especially for me going to the UP, I won't see it probably till uh, this is going to be an odd year. But, you know, when I get in there, hopefully, you know, get working, get that soil sample, do the testing, get the, the lime down. Um, you know, looking at, at something here that I've been thinking about, uh, and I've done a little bit, I've went to a few classes on, and it's kind of become a little more well known here recently about running fire through through an area and, and burning off versus turning down uh, yep. you know when, when you do that i mean what are we actually putting back into the soil are, are we are we you know when we have that ash is that change how does that change the ph and when do we run fire through something versus turning it down and then taking our, our readings and adding the the fertilizers and things like that well, the biggest thing you're doing when you're burning down is you're putting organic matter into the soil and you're adding potash, mm -hmm. potassium. So that's what you're adding to the soil. Uh, the, what I like is because I do a lot of burning myself. I'm able on my property. I can control it. I can burn it. Um, there's a lot of my plots, depending on what I'm going to plant. I will actually do a burn off and seed right over top of that. So I won't be working any soil. Anytime you work soil, you're pulling weed seeds up. So the deeper you go on that soil, the more weed seeds you're going to bring to the top, and they, a lot of times they will try to overtake the plot. So you can do a good burn off. You're actually helping the soil, and you're eliminating a lot of weed issues you're going to have. Okay. So it equates to maybe like a, a no-till drill type situation too instead of burning off where they're just putting the seeds in and you're not stirring up that seed bed. Yes, exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. Mark, have you ever used fire on your food plots? No, I have not. Um, I and I kind of I'm hesitant to do it because I want to have an extra body or two there, and a lot of times I'm just down <laughs> there by myself. Um, long story short, my brother, my oldest brother, 20 years ago did this. Um, he was burning off a small section and got away from him, and the fire department had to be called. Um, so, stay away from the fire, but what I will do is I will go in and clear the ground. And, Robbie, can you talk a little bit to, if I can't burn the, off everything that's there, 
can you do like a roundup and kill everything off and then go back in? How soon can you go back in and plant over something that you killed off? Well, a lot, a lot of your small seeds, like your clovers, your chicories, your alfalfa, stuff like that, you can kind of do as a no-till type application. Uh, you definitely want seed to soil con, uh, con to, yeah, seed to, seed to soil contact. Um, but yeah, getting in there with some Roundup, your glyphosate, mix in some Plot Max, and uh, you'll just go in there, spray it off, kill that area off. Now, you're looking at a minimum of seven days. That's what Roundup will actually tell you, glyphosate to tell you. I try to tell everybody, give it 12. I like giving it 12 days to get that residual out of there. Because them seeds are a living organism, so I don't want them uh, getting killed off by the residue. So I always like waiting that 12 days, and uh, and it works out very well. Right. And I think one of the number one rules that I've learned from you in the past is if you're going to put a food plot out, try to do it right before a good rain. Absolutely. Especially if you're doing a no-till type application, uh, it, it's always better to put it right out before rain. Yep. Right. All righty. So, so while we're talking about no-till or we're talking about a perennial or an annual, uh, kind of give us a – I have the website up. And if anybody wants to go while they're either watching the show or they want to go, uh, go to antlerking.com, uh, browse their website, and then literally they ha you go to each section. Like I'm in the food plot section right now. Uh, and literally, there's a menu here. Uh, it has the name of their food plot mix. Uh, what's the life cycle? Is it a perennial? Is it an annual? Kind of like when you want what, when you want to plant it. Uh, so, Robbie, we're coming into spring here. Uh, there, we still get frost. I think it's going to be 21 tonight. Uh, frost seeding, or and it even has the pH. What would you suggest uh, for the springtime? What do you think in that? You know, depending on obviously where our soil's at, but what's a good one you'd go with uh, out of the gate? You know, I'm always looking towards our trophy clover mix. That's my that's my very favorite mix. But that has to have a very good soil. It has to have a good pH in the soil. It has to have a lot of sun. So I'm looking there. Now, if I'm in the kind of the backwood type plots where I know I'll be getting a lot of shade, I'm going with my game changer clover, which is our shade tolerant pH tolerant clover. Um, if you're an alfalfa guy, our Booner Buffet with the alfalfa clover and chicory is also a good one, but it needs a very good pH. It actually needs a pH right at that about 7.0 because of the premium alfalfa varieties we use. Um, so I'll, I'll look into that thing. But one thing I would like to touch on, and I know it scares a lot of people and they worry about it, is over the past, the past five years, all you hear is frost seeding, frost seeding, frost seeding. And I got three of the calls today. Is it too late? It's never too late to seed clover in the springtime of the year. So you can either call it frost seeding, or if it's a little warmer where you're at, it's called overseeding. It's going to do the exact same thing. Then small seeds are going to get in there. But now when it comes to frost seeding, if you're in that time, I like when you get in that fall, a fall during the day, a freeze at night, it will suck that seed right down in, and uh, you'll get the best right there. But if, if your frost is already gone, you're not getting them cold freezing nights, don't thread it because you can still overseed right over that food plot. It just depends on what you call it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Makes sense to me. Right. Exactly. Um, question. Okay. So I'm looking at the, the menu here, and I, and I see something – uh, and like a southern greens. I'm in the north. Would that work up here as it would down there? Or would here, that... here's, the, here's the crazy thing about southern greens. We were approached about wanting to get a good mix for down the southern states, Texas, Florida, all that. But when you look at a brassica type variety, you know, they're going to need that frost to help them turn sweet. They need that hard frost to get that starch to turn to sugar. So if you look at Nebraska as in collard greens, collard greens is sweet from day one. It does not need it. It's always sweet, so the deer will eat it. So we're thinking, this is what we need to do. Get it for the guys that want brassicas in the southern states. They don't have to wait for a frost, especially if they don't get one. So we did this. We mixed a little bit of other stuff in with it, some radish and stuff, and winter wheat, uh, and tested it for about three years. In our testing, after we already named it, in our testing, we realized we were planting it in northern Wisconsin all the way to, to southern Texas. And the deer were hammering everywhere again. 
So the only negative thing about planting it in a colder environment, especially up like where you guys are at, then deer are going to hit them collard greens, where if you're planting the, the, the honey hole, which is our truck variety, that's a late season plot. Them deer aren't going to touch that honey hole that much until you get them real hard frost on it. So you're going to have a lot more forage there during the cold winter months because with them colored greens and southern greens, they will literally eat them from the time they start growing all the way through their growing season. So if, if I was you guys where you're at, I would want to stick with something like our honey hole and slam dunk. You get down, lower down the Midwest, uh, in the southern states, our southern greens is awesome for that warmer climate. You know, that's kind of funny. You mentioned that that it's sweet coming right. I vision literally the deer watching it come up and just mowing it, mowing it down. So yep. to the point where you will come back, look at it, and go, it's not it's growing. growing. Yeah. But if yeah, you, exactly. you, and if you don't have a grow cage there or something to show you. Uh, yeah, well, it was here. Or if you can get some kind of fencing around it to keep deer out, I mean, like a, a one of those solar-powered electric fences to yep. charge it to keep them out, let it grow up, and then turn it loose. Right. Yep. Exactly. Now, uh, Mark Coleman, what are you using uh, for your food plots this year? Well, I'm always going to go with trophy clover and game changer clover. It's still my... I'm kind of like Robbie. It's hard to beat a, a good clover mix, uh, but I'm also going to be doing some Booner Buffet, and I, I'm really anxious to try the Southern Greens. I've got a couple of bags of that on order, um, and I'm also going to go with Honey Hole and Slam Dunk this fall for a fall plot. Uh, the deer last year just completely, once that frost hit my Honey Hole, the deer were in it every day, and they were eating the bulbs. They were digging up the ground. Um, so definitely going to keep those on my, my list for every fall. But in the springtime, uh, definitely going to be a clover, and I'm going to get this uh, southern greens out there and give that a good shot and see what happens. And, and you know, you're going to be out there throwing, throwing your seed out there, and what better way to finish off your food plot than using the Packer Max, right, Robbie? Robbie? No, yeah, that, that is my favorite tool in the world. That's that. That's just as good as sliced bread. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> right, exactly, and it, it would not. It, it, you know what? And we're gonna hopefully get some more video of Mr. Mark Coleman using his special three wheeler to get that uh, Packer Max going down in Indiana. Right. I'm gonna use the three wheel bike once or twice, but I've got a garden tractor now, and it's work smarter, not harder. Oh, man, I'm disappointed. I want some more video of you pedaling and pulling the Packer Max. Oh, I'll at least do one video of that. <laughs> there we go. And, and, and uh, you know, we're not only talking about deer here, but is there anything in the Antler King line that's going to help? I know springtime is a big turkey season uh, all around the state. Is there anything that's going to help out uh, other uh, animals in the area, whether it be turkeys or anything else we might be thinking of? I want to add something real quick before I answer that here, and we were talking about the Packer Max. Um, I don't want anybody to be confused here thinking it's a sponsorship type deal. When I say I love that product, I'm not sponsored by Packer Max. I know the owner personally. We became friends after me buying one of his units. That, that is what makes my food plots what they are. So I just don't want people thinking, oh, he's getting paid to say that. I am not. I am not sponsored by him. It is a great product, so make sure you check yourself, check one out. Absolutely, and we've been using Pac Max. Shoot, we've known Lincoln for a few years now before he even came on as a sponsor of Up North Journal. And, and Mark Coleman's used one down in Indiana. I've used one in the UP. Uh, we have another model to try out this year coming up, but you are totally right. I know you'll hear that too, but it, it's something we've. Uh, You've tested it, used it. We've tested it, used it. Mark Coleman's tested it, used it. Uh, we don't believe. We don't do things we don't believe in. Yeah. Well, you got to get that contact with the ground. That's right. the big thing, and that's what the Packer Mac does. And it also cuts the, you know, those those grooves and holds that moisture in, and, and puts that moisture in contact as well. So. Yep. It's just a great tool. And, 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 and with that being said, uh, if you're interested in Packer Mac, go to packermax.com. 
Uh, I think Lincoln is going to, I don't know if Lincoln's going to be down in Peoria or not, but uh, if uh, he is, yeah. Okay, then you can, we'll make sure to send over Mr. Mark Coleman to see Lincoln Roan. Oh, yeah. You got to wear the hat, though, the straw hat. I'll talk to Robbie about whether or not I can wear the hat. <laughs> you may not want to spend all day with me. <laughs> right, exactly. But, you know, as, as we're talking here, uh, moving on to the, the, the food plots, uh, other animals in the air, turkeys or anything like that, do you have something we could plant to help them out as well? There, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. Let's say for a spring planting, if you're starting a new plot, definitely your clovers, your alfalfas. You know, them, them, them birds love getting in there, picking through them. But if you want to look farther ahead, when you plant your fall plantings, uh, you want to look more towards something with cereal rye in it. So if the mix, like we have our fall, winter, spring, our cereal rye variety, our grade eight has cereal rye in it. But if you're planting something and you want to add something for a great attraction for the next spring, mix some cereal rye in it if it don't already have it in it. And, uh, and the reason why is cereal rye is actually an annual, but it acts like a perennial for the first year. It will go dormant with a frost, and then it will green back up about a month earlier than any other plant out there. So instead of waiting for them 50-degree ground temps, it's, it's coming back to life about 37-degree ground temp. So it's going to be a high-protein food source. Of, the turkeys are going to be in it. They're going to bug through it. Uh, uh, they really, really like it. So there's two different ways you can do it there. That's a great option. Right? And so, you know, that goes back to kind of, I know we're talking spring plotting now, getting out, getting your, your soil tested. Uh, Lincoln Roan did say that he will be down there. Um, but this is kind of an all-year thing. If you ever, like you just mentioned, uh, whether, you know, you're thinking about spring, but you got to think about fall, which actually, if you think about fall, you start thinking about next spring. spring. It, it, it's a 24-7, uh, 365 cycle. Yep. Exactly. And, that, and it, it kind of, I like it because whether you're out there in the summertime or you're out there in the fall or in the spring and you see the fruits of your labor yeah. coming up. Yep. And, and, and you see your work. It, it gives you a, a quick return on, on your investment and your work. Right, exactly. So, you know, it's just like, you know, if you ever pay attention, Mark Coleman does his uh, uh, cameras on, on Tuesday, uh, photo shoot Tuesday, and you can see that his plots, he's got deer jumping, coyotes running around with things in its mouth. We don't know what it is. <laughs> um, so it, it's awesome. And you're right, Tammy, it is always deer season, but we always think about other animals that are in the woods at that time too and and mark you are now officially known as charlie daniels <laughs> well i can't sing but okay um but you know one of the things that we we're talking about here is, is how we're doing food plots and, and for me the ultimate goal for me is is a healthy herd and you know providing that to grow the deer to make sure they're healthy those spawns are going to be dropping here in a couple three months and just getting the right nutrients out there in a space where the deer feel comfortable eating them. Food plots is one of it. Uh, the trophy um, mineral, the trophy deer mineral is, a, is an amazing product to help those deer. Exactly. And, and before you go any further, Mark, how about we go into our second break, and when we come back, we're going to jump from food plots to the next one. We'll talk about minerals and attractions to help out that herd that you brought up a great point. All right, we're going to take a quick step outside, and we come back. We'll jump right on that. We'll be right back after this. Keep those questions coming, folks. This is awesome. We got Lincoln Rowan paying attention. We got Mandy Stoppin hanging out there. Uh, Tammy Delk is in the house. Uh, is Randy going to be in Illinois? Do we know if Randy's going to be in Illinois Classic? Uh, it was last year. Randy, Randy Stoppin Hagen, if you're still on, are you going to be in Peoria? They're wanting to know with C3. Because... I went to dinner with him, and that was the first time I've met Randy, and I won't ever forget him. Oh, no, no, uh, um, no you won't ever forget him, and, and probably our government has not forgotten him either. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. But uh, Watch yeah. it. We don't want to get kicked off the Internet. Nah, we won't. <laughs> That's hey. right. It's him that gets kicked off the Internet. <laughs> Look at 
We got Lincoln Rohn still on. We haven't been kicked off. That's right. That's right. right. He's, he's, he's a fall guy. That's right. There you go. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, you'll have to do some live uh, shoots from down there. Check everybody yeah. out. Uh, if I don't think, from what I could tell, Randy, I don't think is going to be there, but maybe he will be. He'll answer us, hopefully, and we'll jump Randy, back and do Randy, it. Randy won't be there. Oh, okay. Randy won't be there. Okay. All right. I like yeah. how that happened. There, a voice like came from nowhere, and uh, is like, "Wow, that's pretty good." So there you go. All right, let's do this. Uh, okay. Yep, let's do it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome back, third segment of the show. Before we left you, we started kind of diving into the minerals part of things, so uh, we'll pick it back up there and, and dive right into it. Yeah, Mike, you were talking about uh, overall health of the herd. Um, now. Robbie, what do we got uh, looking at now? Obviously, look in your state to see if you can use minerals. See what if part of the state what, you can or can't, right, like here in Michigan? Right. Uh, so, what would you suggest, uh, you know, getting out there, whether it be the Lick Magic, maybe a Booner Block or a Buck Brick? What, what, where are you going to go with that? If, if you're looking to build the healthiest deer herd that you can, and give them exactly what they need you want to go with our trophy deer mineral if you're the guy that just wants to attract the deer that come in uh, a good camera magnet that does have some nutritional value not as much as a trophy deer mineral but some go with the lick magic you know you get them with our boomer blocks uh, another very good product that stands right side by side with our uh, trophy deer mineral is our apple burst mineral block our 20 pound block so them are two of the premium, the Apple Burst Mineral Block, the Trophy Deer Mineral is our premium mixes. Where you get into the Magic, uh, the Booner Blocks, the Buck Bricks, you're getting more into a, uh, an attractant type mineral that will benefit the deer, but just as much as the premiums. There you go. So you got you actually you've got several different options when you go there. But the number one, like you said, is the trophy deer mineral. And was that the very first mineral product coming from Antler King? That is what started this company in 1986. Todd Silver uh, developed the very first mineral there, and uh, it just went from there. You know, went went around to selling it in the back of his cars to, uh, to what it is today, which is unbelievable. And that's the same bag, same color, and everything from back then. If I remember the first time we had you on the show. Well, well they, they, they upset me after that time. Uh, that was something we have never changed. That was always original bag. But last year, they did go to a poly bag, uh, so it has changed. And uh, it's, grow, it's, it's growing on me. I didn't think I would like it in a different bag, but it is growing on me. I missed it original bag that was, you know, 30, 30, almost 35 years old. Okay. Mark, what are you going to, are you using any of these products out on your farm? Yeah, so the trophy deer mineral is, is a must every year. Um, again, you got to watch your state rules, your state laws uh, when it comes to hunting over any of those type of uh, environments. The other thing that I absolutely have fallen in love with is the Graniac block. That they, they now make a Graniac block that's a 33-pound block, and you can put one of those out depending on your farm like mine. I put one out in about seven days. The deer have eaten it completely gone. I mean, they'll come back looking for anything they can find of it. But, uh, Robbie, do you have a Graniac block there in the background? Yeah. Yeah, I got one right here. Yeah. That thing right there is a beast, but I'm telling you what, that in, me, in my opinion, that is the number one block that I was, I'm going to go to every time. There you go. So, uh, you know, with with that, you know, we're talking the minerals, whether you, you use the Lick Magic, like we talked, Trophy Deer Minerals, you can't go wrong there. Um, you know, looking into the next, uh, going in the website, uh, you've got, we, we're looked under the minerals. Now we're looking at the, the attractants uh, that you do have. Uh, we've got uh, Antler Aid, Unbeatable, uh Cotton candy. Yep. You got to talk to me about cotton candy. Who doesn't like cotton candy? Uh, I'll tell you what, the deer love it. <laughs> cotton 
candy is one of them ones, kind of like he was talking about the grainy act, grainy act block. When they eat it up, they keep, keep coming back, pawing at the ground every night for more. You know, um, again, this product was pretty much made for the southern states because of the cotton hole. Uh, but testing it up north, everything. And you'll hear me talk about testing quite a bit because we usually test a product three to four years prior to bringing it out on the market. So we test it all over the U.S. And the deer love it up in the northern zones. So uh, it's, it's our number one selling attractant, and it has been now three years running. I mean, it is it's crazy. I mean, we actually have it in a 25-pound bag now, too, because people were asking so much for a bigger bag. We went from a 5-pound bag to a 12-pound and we still offer both of them, but people were still complaining. So we we went to a twenty five pound bag for them. Do, you know, talking about these attractions and everything, it's got me kind of thinking. It, do you do you see anybody any other types of hunters uh, crossing over where they'll use these attractions for a different species? Yeah, you see, especially with bears, hogs. Uh, that's the two main ones. Uh, turkeys. Some of people, are, if they're if it's legal in their area, uh, like our uh, final feast uh, with all the grain and stuff in it or uh, roasted uh, bean cuisine with the, the soybeans. Uh, but yeah, a lot, a lot of it gets gone. I mean, we have so much of it being used for, for hogs and, uh, and bears. Okay. Bean cuisine. It almost sounds like you're making coffee. Yeah, or I, I was thinking more like lean cuisine. That's kind of what I need. Right. I, I, I kind of <laughs> like the final feast. Yeah, it, it kind of says it all. Right? <laughs> but, you know, getting all this stuff, you know, as we talk about this, folks, if you go over to antlerking.com, check it out. If you're on Facebook, look up Antler King Products. Uh, they got a, a page there. Get over. You can like. Uh, if you got questions, ask questions. Send them a, a, a message. Uh, most likely, it's going to be Robbie that's going to be answering the question. There you go. I'm all they want to answer is all Antler King's customer service. I'm it. He is customer service. There you go. Yeah. And Robbie, everything on the website is uh, free shipping, right? Yeah, it's always free shipping on our website, yes. Can't beat that. Oh. Right. You know, talking about uh, using these attractants, uh, where it's legal to use these, uh, I know a lot of people use these for, for use them to stage up for cameras and putting cameras out. Yeah. Uh, what... In your opinion and what you've done, because I know you said you've got cameras out, where do you put a camera as far as, you know, from the attractant to get the best types of photos? What, what's best in, in your uh, opinion? Well, in my area, I can't legally here in Illinois use any of it. Uh, all I can use is the camera and food plots. I can't use any mineral okay. uh, practice, nothing like that. Uh, but now areas where we've been in states where I've hunted uh, just to get uh, – a count of the deer that's in the area. I want to see what, what's kind of going on in there. You know, I'll take something like our Lick Magic, uh, our Apple versus Attractants, one of my favorite. The Final Feast is one of my favorites. Uh, and get in. And I'm always, I'm always just getting on a head, heavy, heavy trail type area right off of it, maybe 15, 20 feet off of it. And uh, just seeing what it will bring over to them. The Attractant part of it is very, very potent. So, but you get in some areas. I mean, and I really think if I was to do it here in Illinois, the deer are not used to something like that. It's such a strong odor that they will be standoffish for a while until they get to it. But you get in areas where they use them all the time, they come running. It's like a dinner bell. Okay. So, but you don't, so don't be discouraged because if you never use something like that. But before I get to say anything, we're always talking about this like I did with it's illegal here in Illinois. If you're wanting to use minerals and, and stuff like that and you can't legally in your state, really look into if you can plant something, plant some chicory. Chicory is the only plant out there that actually has trace minerals and vitamins in it. So the deer can actually get their vitamin and, and mineral intake from chicory, uh, just like they will. Not as not as good as they would from the mineral lick, but they will at least get that, that intake that they want. That's good to know. Right, exactly. And Mark, are, are you using any attractants or anything like that, or is it illegal in your state in Indiana? You can use attractants up to a certain date, but then they have to all be removed prior. I think it's like 10 days prior to, to hunting. Um, I try to stay away from the attractants. Really, the one thing that I do is a trophy deer mineral, um, and I try to select a spot 
nowhere near where I'm going to be hunting, just don't want to get in trouble with it. But the deer just absolutely love it, and they'll, they'll love it for six months, a year. I mean, once you put it out, they keep coming back and digging and digging more. Uh, just for me, I try to stay away from the attractants unless it's like, you know, going to be something I'm putting out there for them during a non-hunting season. Just nowhere near that. You know, when, when it gets to August, I'm usually backing out of anything other than food plots just to be safe. I write the date down so in case there's any questions, I know exactly when I backed away from putting anything out. Um, that's just how I, I, I do things on the farm. Yeah, I remember the, the year that I was down in Indiana hunting down with the guys, and there was a section of the property that was a traditional mineral site. And uh, they had told me, it's like, you have to stay away from that area during hunting season. You have to be so many feet away, you can't hunt over top of it because it, it's been... It's into the ground, burned into the ground, and, and it, animals keep coming back for it. So it's, it's still kind of like a bait site, so to speak. Um, is, is that still standing down there in, in Indiana, or do you know? I do know that there is a required distance you must be from a mineral site. I don't know how many yards it is. For me, I don't take that chance, and I just right. make sure I'm, I'm well away from any of those spots. Most of my trophy deer mineral sites they dig at them so much that they become ponds, you know, small ponds. And so it kind of is a dual role. If I want a water source somewhere, I'll put a trophy deer mineral out there. And in six months, I've got a hole big enough for the deer to drink out of. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you let the deer create the, they're, they're doing the excavating for you. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, my brother Terry is asking, can Michigan use the mineral blocks? Ah, no. Not in the lower. Not in the lower. Only in the upper. Only in the upper. Yep. Uh, and that is, <laughs> that's an interesting gray area. But definitely not in the lower. Don't even, they will try to go after you sometimes if your bird feeder is yeah. Oh, yeah. losing too much. If you, uh, if you rake apples into a pile underneath your tree to get rid of. <laughs> right? Uh, you know what? I got a question for Robbie about the mineral. What is the proper way to start a trophy deer mineral spot i like going in and I'll, I'll usually take a steel rake with me and i will go in and i'll find the area that i want that's more of a secluded area where the deer are going to feel safe they're not going to get pressured they're going to call it home uh and not be alert every time they go in there so i'll find that spot on my farm a flat area, I don't want no kind of runoff or anything like that down to a creek or something. And I will go with that still rake, I'll clean me off about a four foot circle of all the debris, uh, weeds, roots, anything like that, moss, anything that's there. And then I'll take one 20 pound trophy deer mineral bag and I will pour it all over that whole four foot area. That's how I like doing it. A lot of guys will just do one pile right in the center. I like spreading it over that whole four-foot area because one, one trophy deer mineral bag is a 20-pound bag. It was actually designed from the get-go to start up four different mineral licks. So five pounds per lick. So instead of going back in and replacing it so often, I like using one 20-pound bag in the spring, and I'll use one 20-pound bag uh, in about, it's, you're like in June, First part of July on the Indiana farm that I have, that's how I use it on there, and then I'm out of there. So I just use normally two bags. Now, if you got a lot of deer herds or you're on a deer farm and you're raising deer, you might want to use a little bit more, but I just like that four foot area, two bags a year. And how many mineral sites per acreage? Like if, I, if you have a 40 acres, are you looking at? One per 40 or? One, one per 40. One mineral lick per 40 is how we did all of our testing on our deer farms and all that stuff over the years, and that, that seemed to work the best. Okay. And you're spreading that out. Is, is that just to give the opportunity for more deer to use it towards the same time? I mean, is, is there yeah. competition over it? Is that what you're trying to reduce is competition? I, I want it to dissolve into the soil as quick as it can. So where a lot of people think when they go out to their mineral lick and they don't see that there, that the deer have ate it all down. Mm -hmm. That mineral is made to dissolve into the soil. So as in me spreading it out on a thin layer all the way over it, it will dissolve in 
a lot faster and the deer will start pawing at it. So instead of it just being a big chunk pile. So it's going to last longer for them to use. Yes, absolutely. Okay, makes sense. Exactly. So uh, there you go, folks. We have literally covered the entire Antler King lineup with the exception of, of one section yet. We're going to get that to that quickly in our last section. So let's take our last break, and when we come back, we'll hit the feed section. All right, we're going to step outside. We'll take our last break. we come back. We'll wrap it up. So we'll be right back after this. Sc Scuba Steve says, what's up, Robbie? Well, you, uh, another, another pro snapper. There you Scooby. go. He was a good old boy. But yeah, he's right, too. I'm gonna, oh, go ahead, Mark. I'm going to step away now while we're on a break. That way, you guys come back. There's no interruptions because I know my door's about to go up, and there's going to be a lot of noise in this house. Okay. All right. You have a good one. Right. You take care, man. Thanks, Robbie. Greatly appreciate you. See you in a couple right. days. I'll see you Friday, bud. Bye. All right. <laughs> I wonder if this is going to change everything here real quick. It might. So we're going to wait just a second until he signs off just to see where we stand with this. So while we're doing that, folks, uh, it's going to be about that time. Uh, we're just a few weeks away from turkey season here in Michigan, which everybody's getting all geared up for. Got some warm weather. Hopefully next week we might hit the 60s. That will be fantastic. Well, I can't wait. Actually, si Friday. They're talking Friday. We might uh, we might be in the 60s. Right. So. Friday might be 60s it's going to dip for the weekend but like monday tuesday of next week it's going to be in the 60s so that will be awesome all right all right here we go stand by three two one welcome back we're in the last segment of the show here we got about 10 minutes to wrap things up uh and chat and, so in the last segment robbie we wanted to hit on the website again everybody antlerking.com uh, check out their website. That's kind of where we've been focusing, kind of walking through each little area we have there. Or if you're on Facebook, go over and look at the Antler King uh, Facebook page there, too. Any questions will be answered by Robbie because he is the one and only. Customer service. Customer service. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the feed. Uh, interesting, uh, you've got one It says Rack Maker, and you've got Deer Elk Pellets. The deer and elk pellets have, have been around for many, many, many years. Uh, we started that product for a lot of the, the high fenced uh, breeding pens and stuff like that that Todd knew some people, uh, the founder of Antler King, and then it got into the outfitters and, and now to just the everyday consumer. Uh, I, I sell a lot of it to them. And uh, you got a, a, a perfect protein. Um, and it's just one of the things that you're not, I don't want to say this. If you look at our products, let's say the rack maker, you're going to look at it as 16% protein. Okay, you're looking at 18 on the deer and elk pellets. The 18 is just a hair high, not too bad. But if you look at a white-tailed deer, most people are feeding deer during the winter months of the year. They want to help them get through that winter, uh, fatten them back up. A white-tailed deer can only utilize 16% protein without burning fat off its body. So if you start feeding the deer real high high protein feed, you're actually burning fat off that deer while you're trying to fatten him up. So that's why you'll see with our Graniac blocks, our rack maker, stuff like that, you're going to see that 16% or less on them feed products because you don't want to be burning fat off them deer when you're wanting to fatten them up. You'd be de you'd be defer defeating the purpose. Counterproductive. Yeah, you'd be counterproductive when you're trying to help them. And that's one thing nice about the website. When you go over there, you click on the products, and not only do they tell you about the products, they give you those numbers: 16% uh, protein uh, using molasses and soy soy soybean oil. Um, it, it's great information from your starting of your pH testing all the way getting down here to uh, your feed that you can actually help the deer out. And, and, and really it's all for, like we talked about in the last segment, um, helping the deer herd out and, depending on what you planted, helping the turkeys out as well. Yeah, absolutely. So well, looking at uh, the, the product line right now, if somebody is to, to place an order, is there anything that, that uh, you know, we've always heard supply chain issues ever since we've been dealing with the pandemic um, how are you guys setting right now on supplies anything that uh, that we're waiting on or is everything fully stocked and ready to be delivered well everything's pretty much ready to be delivered now we do have 
Uh, a lot of our mixes, our premium mixes, we also offer a 40 pound bag. Okay. Uh, we have been out of a few of them here, but usually within four to five days, we got them right back in. So as in our regular smaller coverage, our half acre, our quarter acre bags, stuff like that, we got them. Uh, when I call it, when, I, when, I, when we talk about the supply and demand, stuff like that, and the shortages, yes, they're all talking about it with the seed companies. We haven't seen any issues there. Uh, majorly, we've seen a few that we actually had to change some varieties of clovers and a few things just because we was afraid that we we're going to be limited. Uh, but other than that, you call out the free shipping uh, or get online or on online free shipping from us, and uh, you're good to go. There you go. You know, and that's one of the things. Soon. You know, if, you, if anything, folks, what we want to stress is it, you don't have to go out and buy a lot, but try something. If you don't try it, you'll never know. Do a little, do a little homework on, on what you're going to buy, whether it be a food plot uh, or a mineral or, or whatever you might be going to buy. Uh, but make sure you take the right steps. Take that soil test. See where you're standing. You can go to the, the website. You can click on the food plots. If you don't want to do anything this year, look and see where your pH is. If you're in like 5.5, they've got something that you can use this year. It's, it's not you're stuck. And, and those soil test kits that you've got, you said those do four plots, correct? Four tests, yeah, four plots. Okay, that's a bargain. For 15 bucks. Uh, yeah, most places charge you anywhere five, ten bucks. You got to send it in, each and, one. and that's each one. So you got four tests in, in one. Exactly. So, but uh, you know, that way you're ready for the year. It's, you're going to turn into thinking about this just for spring, but it's going to turn into summer. It's going to turn into fall. And then you're going to be thinking about next spring. So if you're in Peoria this weekend, you can find Robbie at the Peoria show. And then after that, it looks like the show circuit will be done. But uh, it'll be time for him, like he said, to turn some dirt. Uh, hopefully up here it'll be, it'll be warm enough. But uh, I tell you what, just remember, get over to antlerking.com, check it out, or on Facebook, uh, and, and hit them up. All right. So, do you know what booth you're going to be in at the Peoria show? Oh, I knew you was going to ask me that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to put you on the spot. Oh. Get a show map. Get a, get a floor I, map. I've, I've done so many shows here lately that I can't even keep them straight myself. How many shows have you done this year, roughly? This has been my ninth one. Ninth one. Nine, nine shows a week. Nine shows every week. I haven't had a break yet. Wow. It's just one after the other. Right, exactly. And and we got a picture uh, of the last show, I think it was the last show, where Packer Max and Antler King actually took a picture of each other's booth, it looks like. So, you know. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, see? There you go. And, and, you know, like we talked about earlier, you got if the final step, and Mike said, making that seed contact, uh, getting that Packer Max, us up here at Up North Journal will be using it as well. Um Robbie's been on before, so we can't ask him the typical questions. But I thought of a couple while we were sitting there talking about show season. Okay. All right. And, and, and Robbie, it, we're going to have to ask you some kind of questions. We can't let you get out of here that easy. All right. Go see. All right. So you've been on the road for, what, eight, nine weeks now? Yeah. All right. Number one question. What state would you think was the best state? As in selling wise? Nope, as in just, hey, I was in this state and, and overall was a good time. I gotta say, uh, I gotta say Wisconsin. All right, shout out to Wisconsin. Yep. Okay. All right, now, in those eight weeks of travel, maybe nine, best meal. Oh, Texas Roadhouse, prime rib. <laughs> okay, along those lines, <laughs> worst meal. Uh, let me think here, what did I have? Must have been nothing that really stuck in his mind then. It wasn't that bad. No, I mean, I, I usually try, since the company's paying for it, I try to eat pretty good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, okay, uh, you're at these shows, you see a lot of things. What's one thing that stuck out at you at any show that you either did the old, hmm, wow, or 
You just kind of had to take a double take. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, it's the praying dog that rides around the little Jeep. Oh, yeah, Dixie the praying dog. Yeah, Dixie the praying dog. Uh, every time she come, uh, he comes running around, I got to take a double take. Uh, and a video of that dog every time is just something that is just fascinating. I, I love the little Jeep because I, I, I drive a Jeep and I'm really fond of him. But also, he's got like the aviator lens goggles yeah. on. On, on the dog, on on Dixie, and uh, yeah. she she just puts all that gear out and you know wears it with no problem and does her thing. Yeah, I always got to double take that one because it it's just one of the things that catches you off guard. Yeah, right. right? It's it, very cool. Exactly. Lincoln Roan uh, says Wisconsin Wisconsin Dells, so he agrees with you. Yep. Uh, Denise says our favorite is Texas Roadhouse too. Yes, it is. <laughs> and oh, Lincoln Road it throws in a, a famous Dave. Famous Dave's. Oh yeah, we went to yeah, yeah. Okay. All uh, right. If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, I may have bought Lincoln and Jeremiah their dinner one night at Moose Jaw. So I get, I keep, he might have to repay that favor come uh, Peoria. I think uh, he does. I think he owes you a dinner. I think so. With this <laughs> being the last show, you're probably all going to be at. Yeah, that's definitely uh, Lincoln Road. You can mark that down right now. Make he, reservations if you have to. He's wanting some prime rib. Right? <laughs> uh, five, okay. five, five, if I was a betting man, I would probably say Lincoln's probably going to take me to Rural King for free popcorn and coffee, probably. No, <laughs> <laughs> and he'll park in the furthest spot out and make you walk in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. you got to walk it off. Uh, right? Sorry, I've exactly. been giving you a hard time tonight, man. Um... <laughs> um I gotta give a shout out to Lincoln. He was a, he was down in Gulf Shores the same time I was. We, we we tried to connect. We were only a few miles apart, but uh, we we're both on vacation, and uh, you know we knew we're we're gonna see each other soon. So uh, he had a good time down. I think he went and did some shark fishing. So. He tried to. He, he tried. To. He tried. End up he caught some other fish as yeah. well, and had and actually cooked them up. So um, oh, one last question. Out of all these shows, uh, now I don't know if you do or not, but uh, most interesting show food you might have tried? You know, I don't try nothing. I don't know what it already tastes like. <laughs> don't blame you. <laughs> uh, probably, probably the most interesting thing you'd ever eat at one of these shows is a hot dog. You never know what it's going to be like. That's yeah. about it. Yeah, because that, that can be all over the board. There, you, you never know. Wow. There, there you go. It, it, it was fun. It was really nice meeting. And, and actually, we, we sat together, Mark, uh, Robbie at ATA um, with his sales staff, which was which was pretty fun, and uh, actually Dan Yasa showed up too. Uh, it was it was a good night, and uh, I'm 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 really looking forward to this partnership we're starting this year with Antler King and working together. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Lincoln Rowan's involved. <laughs> How can that go wrong, right? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so definitely welcome aboard, Robbie. It's good to be joining forces. Like I said, it, it's an orange bag dream for me that started a long time ago when I was younger, but I'm excited. Good. All right, I am too. All right. We got so, anything else? Uh, I think we're, we've pretty much covered all the bases. Uh, so what we want to do is make sure that everybody gets out there, goes to all of Antler King's social media pages, go over and check out their pages. And give them a like, follow, share. Do the same for us on the show. And share the show for us, if you would, please. For anybody that's listening to the podcast portion of the show, make sure you go over to iTunes. If you're listening on iTunes, go over to iTunes and give us a review there. That helps people who support us as well. And before we leave, Robbie, uh, you do a live show as well. You want to give a little shout-out about to the, the live show you got going? Yeah, the, the first and third Tuesday of every month at 7 o'clock Central Time, I do... Uh, a little kind of live show called Turning Dirt. It's uh, I start out every show with a topic that's usually for that time uh, of the year, and then after that, it's all Q and A. So I want all questions and and uh, I'll answer anything I can. I'm just pretty much here to uh, a live customer service to help you out with whatever you need. There you go. So if you got any questions uh, after tonight's show, you can join Robbie on his live show and. Throw questions at him. Maybe we'll get on there and uh, throw some things at him as well. Uh, and you're right, Lincoln Road. Antler King is a fantastic company, and Robbie rocks. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us tonight. Next week, 
if we're talking kayaks, we're going to try. We're talking canoeing. If, oh, canoeing. That's if, right. if everything goes according to plan, we're talking with none other than the happy camper, Mr. Kel, Kevin Callum, uh, over from Toronto in Canada. If, if people were in Canada, they know this guy. He's he's been all over the TV over there. So, uh, I actually had the opportunity to see him a couple weeks back at a symposium over at MSU, and uh, yeah, we're going to have him on the show make that connection everything looks pretty solid and trust us folks from what mike's described it's not going to be your typical canoeing talk no no there there's some good humor in this um guys a lot of fun so make sure you guys tune in all right that's going to do it for us this week we'll be back again next wednesday night 7 30 y'all take care <laughs>